Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a while. I didn't want to make football videos because there's been nothing interesting happening. I didn't want to come in here and moan. But alas, we have Enzo Moresco, as you can tell by the title. We're doing a full analysis into him, some of his tactics, some of his play style, his short career as a manager, where he's been, and a little bit of analysis there. There's not too much information to go off, but let's jump straight into it. So first of all, we're going to look at the experience. Then we're going to look at the tactics. And after that, I'm going to give you my thoughts and conclusions. So let's jump straight into what his actual managerial experience is. So I'm going to skip over his playing career now. Again, you probably find it. it. For me, it's not as relevant at the moment because, as you can tell by the likes of Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard, you can be a great player, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be a great manager. So for that, I'm going to ignore it, even though he's had a decent playing career. I'm going to start here. So we look at Sevilla at the moment. The fact is Sevilla, again, he was an assistant. Then he was an assistant at West Ham um, for, for a bit as well. Then he went on to manage the EDS, is the elite development squad. So, But essentially, it's the under-23s. We won the league with um, in 2021, which was fantastic. So we won the league with, again, West Ham's under-23s, playing a couple of formations. We'll look into that a little bit later. Then in a little stint of 14 games against for Palmer, um, as manager of Palmer, they were in a very similar position to Leicester City. They weren't in a great position where they'd just been relegated from the Serie A. They wanted to get back to that. And from what I understand, and doing research from Rob and other people as well, he didn't quite make it click. He brought in 40 new, 50 new players, including Gian, Gianluigi Buffon, but it didn't quite work out. Part of that was not down to him. and um, Part of it was down to the ownership and the board. And they just did, again, after 14 games, he was sacked. I personally don't think it was the right decision, but then he came back for a year to be Manchester City's assistant, winning the treble with them last year. And now he is manager of Leicester City. So within his time at Palmer, and Man City, where he was the first, like the main manager, what did he actually go and achieve? So obviously the Man City one is pretty obvious with him winning the treble, which is obviously a phenomenal achievement. And the second one, we're going to get into Palmer and what he actually did, how it went wrong, and what some of the tactics are around that as well. So the first person I'm going to look into is somebody called Tactica. He's been on the show before, phenomenal person from South Korea, a phenomenal football um, analysis. I'm not going to go through the entire thread because I want you to go follow his Twitter and make sure you go and check out his channel, uh, check out his channel as well. Fantastic videos. But essentially he sets up, because we're going to look at the Manchester City under 23s. Some of these names you might have know, might know from now. So the likes of Cole Palmer, Liam Delap. Um, I think he came on against the 5-2. Lavia, who's going to, um, well, it looks like he's going to back to the Premier League, but he was in Southampton last year. Some of the players, he set up in a 4-3-3, but he has the option, as Rob Tanner was mentioning um, in his article, which, again, I really recommend that you subscribe to The Athletic and follow his stuff, potentially playing a 4-3-3 or a 3-5-2. It will be similar tactics to Pep. He was liked by the players and what a massive thing for me is that Pep didn't want him to go. That's a big indictment for him. We're looking at the kind of manager that, that, that have come out of him, the likes of Eric Ten Hag. You're looking at Arteta, company. He's in good hands. Do you know what I mean? There is a good, there's a good foundation here, and hopefully it can be a match made in him. And I'll give you my thoughts a, bit, a little bit later on. But from here, again, it looks like he sets up in a 4-3-3. And something that Tatika has mentioned as well, he sticks more to the, again, the half-space runs. It's total football what he's trying to play. Um, and I, again, I'll put the link to everything down below. It's trying, it's total football, trying to understand exactly, play a full game. Now, this has got me more excited about Premier League. I'll get into that in a second, but it's got me really excited about potentially returning to the Premier League where it wasn't before. So one of the main things that Tactica mentioned is the fact that he's pressing. He's pressing hard at the moment. So he, when people get the ball, we run, we press. And the thing is, we've not seen this with Brendan Rodgers. When it was press, he was half pressing, half trying. There is a full, you commit to this kind of game. So you, again, in this, again, a great example. He moves forward, um, Doyle, and it's a total, fall, so we are completely going to suffocate the other teams with our boundaries and with our press as well. So one thing as well, he likes to, again, give this play play out from the back. So you've got the likes of, again, centre-backs connect through long, um, empty spaces. This, for my, in my opinion, if we're looking at a team that's going to be here next year, because we've seen eight players leave, we'll see a few more leave, to be honest. Our centre-backs will be Walt Fass and um, John Stones. Um, Harry Suter, who will be one of the centre-backs. 
the fact that they're trying to play through the half spaces, the fact that they're looking to play straight balls, I think this will suit them to, in particular, very, very well. The fact they're trying to cut out the space and play quite well, I think it'll be a really good... This is this would suit their style of play. So the 4-3-3 was mentioned, but also a 3-5-2 or a 3-5 in this case as well. So more defensive, but the idea is... The players, after listening to his introduction, the players are going to be more flexible. He's being quite, I won't say conservative, he's being quite hidden about his tactics at the moment, which I understand because you've got to remember that Leicester City will have, we we're going to be seen as the big boys. We've just got a manager, for an assistant manager that just won the treble. We are, we've won the league. Teams will come to us and not want to go the big boys in town. Remember what it's like when Manchester City came to town and Manchester United came and the whole King Power Stadium is up for the game. Regardless of the situation, they're up for the game. That's how other teams are going to see us coming into the championship. They're going to see they won the Premier League. Um, and I'll say it in an egotistical way. This is, it means something, you know, in the championship. The fact that we've got a, an assistant manager who's going in and they've seen what company's done. They've seen our training ground. They've seen some of the players that we're going to have and the money that we've got to spend. This is going to be important for the teams that come to the King Power to play. So the players have to adapt to that. And I think at the moment, the fact that we've got, again, a formation like this, we can play multiple formations. I'm trying to find out at the moment if he plays inverted fullbacks. I know that was more of a, a Pep style as well. But again, I've not managed to find that out as of yet. So that's kind of touching into the Manchester City under 23s. Let's look into what Rob Tanner says about his time at Palmer. So again, I'm going to leave this link to the below for the athletic article. But essentially, they adopted similar systems. They had a 4-1-4-1 at Palmer, and they also had a 4-3-3 that they were playing between as well. It was a, it, it was, you could see it was building. However, there was some good play in terms of how they managed to play. It was a good attacking full style that was full on. And with him coming in, it might take some time for him to implement. But when people, the players have to buy into the philosophy and for, it didn't work out at Palmer, but I don't think that is his fault. I think that was more to do with Palmer than him. From what reading Rob Tano article, I think last week, he mentioned that a lot of the players were sad to see him go and it wasn't his fault that things went wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's like this season. Can we say it's Dean Smith's fault? A little that we got relegated a little bit, but he, was, he wasn't given enough time to really implement his style. And also the rot had already set in. Eight games is not enough time. Just for him, he got the preseason and then he got 14 games before he was sacked. So people will look at that and go negative. But we have to take it in the wider context and go, maybe that wasn't his fault. The amount of players he brought in, he was trying to implement the style and Palmer got rid of him. So it it was, for me, it's a little bit, it is disappointing, but he plays on the counter. He plays um, good speed, speed football as well. And he will, he will get the best out of the strikers as well. So every player has to commit to the system. And that's what I'm hoping. He comes in again. He was at training. He was at the Seagrave and he was meeting some of the players. He's already said Jamie Vardy's staying as well. So that's, again, another important thing as well. Um, and there's going to be, I think there's going to be a good history and a good play. Just as I mentioned before, there was something that Rob Tanner mentioned in the article, the fact that there was five managers, four sporting directors in three years. It shows at Palmer there was constant chaos, and part of that was Maresca. I don't think he'll have the same problem here. I think he's probably come to us as well because he's realised that, look, Leicester have backed their managers for a long time. Craig, with the only exception would be Craig Shakespeare, um, but and maybe Claudio and Ranieri, but we know Ranieri was going wrong. So it was a lot of players were kind of upset that he left, but thought it was important to mention just to give it context. They also mentioned that, yeah, young players were upset that he got sacked, which shows they were doing something. They were enjoying the way they wanted him to play. Now, it will take time. It genuinely will take time in conclusion. This has got me excited about Leicester City. I'll give you my thoughts because I'm keeping this brief. There's not a lot to go off. It's not like we can do a proper deep dive into his tactics and think because I've not seen him. I'm really excited to see the first game of preseason and seeing if we get a really good chance going, get behind the team once again. And it's given me a little bit of belief and hopefully it gives the players. Um, Brendan Rodgers was a cancer, um, especially in the last 18 months. He, we're hearing things again from BBC Radio Leicester. I was listening to recently as well to hear about Maresca. And they were mentioning that they segregated off and they made things 
too easy. They segregated off the first team from everybody else. And they also made sure that, again, everybody was a little bit lazy. I was really raging when I was listening to that by Matt Piper, the fact that they couldn't even take their plates to the to the sink or take the plates and give them to the catering staff. The fact that everything was done for them. That has to change massively. And Maresca will be, he's saying the right things for me. This needs to change. We are a championship club, but we've got the capacity to go back to the premiership. I think it's really important. He's made Va Jamie Vardy the main man. And he said, you are going to be important. I think that's going to really stick up his chest and make him come on to the next level. But do not get it wrong. He's a young manager that will be learning on the job. It's going to be rough. Look at Mikel Artas' time at Arsenal. Yes, the expectations between Arsenal and where we are are different. However, they appointed a manager with no experience. He's got slightly more experience, but not by much, than Arteta. And we've seen what Arteta can do. Another thing as well that I want to mention, they've done it right and they've given him a three-year contract. Now, if he continues to improve, I'd like to see it... Um, a bumper contract, but I think three years is a good amount of time. The fact they gave Brendan Rodgers too much of a contract means they couldn't buy him out. They have to learn from that mistake. I think a three-year is a good indication at the moment. My only thing is, again, we'll see how well he does. Other people might come asking for him, but I still think that Leicester City could be a place that he'd want to stay for the long term. I want to see that he, if he can get the best out of some, some of our youth players. We've got some generational talent, and that's not me saying, that's other people that support England saying it. Sammy Braybrook, I want to see him as part of the team. I want to see Will Alves, if they're if both of them are ready to play a little bit of uh, championship football, get them in the team. We want to see, because we're lo losing so many, and especially that midfield that we had last season, yes, it was completely carved through, is going to be ripped out. James Madison, we all know, is leaving. Yuri Tillemans has left and joined Villa. Wilfred Ndidi looks like, well, he's, he's, he's Ormond and Arin at the moment, but he looks like he's trying to get a move out of there. We don't know who that midfield is going to be, and that needs to be solid. Three-man midfield. Um, Child will probably be in there. KDH will be in there. But we need to find out who that is. Um, overall, I'm excited. I've got, I've, got, I've got a good feeling for once. Last season was so hard to make content for. So hard. Because I just, I like this club. I love this club. I want them to do well. But I'm fed up of saying the same things again and again and again and again. And that nothing was changing. Resk of coming in will help change that. There was a video recently um, about him touring the training ground. Met Jem Justin. Looked quite, looked quite, looked really good. And it's just given me a little bit of fire. A to create content, and B to go on to another level in terms of Leicester City. Within the Championship now, our goal should be to come back up. Now it depends on who we get in. There's been a few players that are linked. We are going to get Rob Tanner back on the show in a few weeks' time as well, so make sure we tune for, stay tuned for that. We are going to touch on some of the transfer requests and transfer rumours that are happening, but at the moment, there, it's a bit of a snow, slow news day. I don't really want to rush into transfers. I want to do proper analysis when we've got proper links. And at the moment, there is only a couple of maybes. Connor Cody being one of them. Um, the backroom staff, we still don't know. Again, Cambiasso apparently has had a work visa um, that we've heard for. They were looking for a work visa, Cambiasso, and then another player that Maresca wants as well in terms of assistant manager. But again, we're going to we're gonna make sure to only focus on rumours that look like they're going to come true. Obviously, we know James Madison is leaving until something concrete comes, because again, there's been no bids or anything. We shall update you. So, Maresca, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Are you excited? Are you not excited? Um, does this feel like a new chapter for Les City? I'm really hoping so. I'm really hoping they put the stamp on it. And I hope that him and Martin Glover come together and they have like a nice bond and they go, right, this is the team I want to build. This is the profile of player that I'm looking for. And he can serve up something beautiful for the championship. Thank you so much. Again, it's great to be back. Um, we'll speak to you soon when we get a transfer update, when something more comes of this, or we'll do a transfer stream every week or so because... There's information that's kind of half there, and I don't want to report on information that is half there. I'd rather get proper sources confirming things and we'll and and then get a video out, just like the, the Enzo situation. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the links below, check out Tacticos, check out Rob Tanner, and we'll see you all in the next video. So goodbye.